What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's talk about it really fast. Rocky. Rocky, 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 Rocky. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the Soul Man. Rocky Johnson. Now, the Soul Man Rocky Johnson is a lot of a lot of people's favorite fighter coming up a lot of the black fighters that was in the rock era you know this was somebody they they watched and looked at his physique to be that short and just stocky and he was like the soul man Came from Canada, had the southern sideburns, could do all these moves in the ring. Real smooth with his transitions and everything. From the drop kicks. Ooh, sorry about that. But uh, doing big drop kicks and everything. Um, he was very polished. Learning how to wrestle um, and driving a truck. Over when he was in Toronto, Canada, and everything else. So he said he actually sparred Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. Was thinking of becoming a boxer. But he landed in AWA, of course, with the Funks and the Harley Races and those guys. And then it led to a feud with him and Jerry Lawyer. And then he was Sweet Ebony Diamond back then. But it was once he became the uh, World Wrestling Federation with Vince, a very young Vince McMahon at the time. <laughs> once he uh, brought in Rocky Johnson, you know, he was brought him up and said, you know what, you know, we're going to work with you and we're going to. You know, I'm going to make you a millionaire. You know, that's how Vince tell everybody. I'm going to make you a millionaire. Doesn't actually happen, but he attempts to make everybody a millionaire. And people hold him to this, you know. <laughs> and during his time there, um, Pat Patterson was one of the guys that, that he was um, really tight with at the time so he was like man listen you know we need to stay together and you know build this thing together and Pat Patterson was one of his guys and Pat was always cool with Vince you know right hand man to Vince so Pat Patterson you know and Rocky Johnson always was eye to eye but over the time during the 80s you know, they were the first black tag team champions ever. As Vince brought back Tony, Tony Atlas, black Superman. Like they say, Tony had the body of an Adonis, and that's what drove Vince. Vince McMahon loved bodybuilders. He's a bodybuilder. He loved the perfectionist of a bodybuilder. The body, that's going to sell. So that's what he wanted to sell, the body. People want to see the body. They want their body to look like that. That's what he's selling, the image. That's perfection. So he saw Tony Atlas and was like, this guy's got a, what a waste. You know, look at that body. So he wants to give him another chance because Tony just didn't get it. You know. He never really tried to get better as a wrestler. He only would do a couple of moves, and that was just all he was going to be willing to do. He was very difficult and kind of weird <laughs> in certain aspects of the way to work with. And he would go into mood swings <laughs> and would just shut down in the middle of a match. So... 
he comes back and he gets a second chance. And he says, I want to put you and you and Rocky going to work together. And he's like, can you handle that? He was, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He listened to Rocky. He's like, Rocky's like, I'm going to work with you. We're going to do this and that. So Rocky, you know, they would let Tony Atlas come in. It was Soul Patrol. He would do all the power moves, the power slams, the pecs, all that. But all the wrestling and all the dirty work was left up to, you know, Rocky Johnson, the Soul Man. And they didn't realize at the time, like, he didn't realize, like, why the Samoans was taking it easy on Rocky and was going hard on him. And he didn't realize that time that Rocky was dating a daughter. Uh, ooh, she, Peter Mavia, the Samoans. You know, that's the Rock's lineage. So they didn't understand that he was dating the daughter. So while he's dating the daughter, he's like, they got him. They actually blessed him as high chief. He's the first black man uh, who's like not full Hawaiian to have that title. He's the chief of their village. High chief. <laughs> that is, man, it, it is, it's incredible to have that kind of honor to be called and ranked high chief in a situation like that. So being ranked high chief and all of these different things was very important to, um, to Rocky at the time. But you can see the deterioration and the frustration in Tony Atlas as he feels like, okay, they are the tag team champions of the world, the first black tag team champions, and he's just not satisfied. He's, he's screwing up. He doesn't really care. And Vince is like, what is wrong with you? And he's like, they never really lost the belt. Soul Patrol had to basically forfeit the belts over because he was going to fire Tony Atlas. He was just being completely unprofessional. And Vince couldn't take it no more. They had to fire him right on the spot. So now... Rocky has to get another partner to be the Soul Patrol, and then they have to go, you know, down that road. But, you know, the guy is just uh, a little difficult. You know, it's sad because he was like, a lot of people looked up to him. He was Black Superman. Yeah, so here's where everything went left. <laughs> everything went left. Vince, I mean, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura, who was getting a lot of publicity on the microphone at this time. He had an injury that put him out for a little bit. So while he was there, he was uh, doing his thing as the early wrestling days and all this stuff. But then once he got injured, it was, you know, retirement and commentary. And once he was doing these things, you know, it was done. You know, he had... Um, he had, like, blood clots in his lungs, so he had to stop wrestling. And they said this was because he was exposed to Agent Orange during his time in Vietnam when he was fighting in the war. So he took a year off after being treated for it, and he did, like, some miniature, like, one matches. So at this time, while they're going through this transition... You're seeing the rise of all these young superstars that are coming up, and they are the next level. So while Rocky, Mavia, and all these guys are building the sport up, and they were there for when it was growing, they're selling out shows, they're putting on good matches, 
they're not getting the shine or the push that, you know, the other wrestlers are getting. And then you got the Hogan era. You know, he came in in the middle of the Hogan era, the start of the Hogan era. Hogan just got there. He just got the belt and it's Hulkamania time. So they're like, this is the good time. This is when the, the business is booming. And you would think that he would be taken care of. You know, that's what Rocky has. He's done a lot. So he's, you know, talks to Vince about it. And Vince is, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to be doing some big things. We're going to get this network deal. We're going to be on national TV at night. We're going to be huge. They came out with Saturday night's main event, you know, and it's like a really big thing for wrestling. They're going to showcase it in all these homes and they're going to be bigger than the NFL. So another person that wasn't happy was Jesse Ventura. And this is where the, the relationship between Vince and Rocky started to, you know, dissipate. Things start to phase out as the Samoans are getting older and they, you know, Big Peter Mavia is retiring and here is uh, Rocky, you know, he's still in it and doing the shows and they're trying to come up with angles against him and And my goodness, it was 1984-85, during the time where WrestleMania and all these things are happening. It's a big time for uh, WWE. They're rising, so they got merchandising coming out. They got all these different things, and wrestlers are giving away their their image their input and the sega genesis video game was getting ready to come out and put out some product where uh image of of uh jesse the body ventura was going to be on there and he had a problem with that but he was starting a coup you know, and he was like, look, we need to do some, make some changes here. And he was like, we need to form a labor union within professional wrestling. And he's trying to get all the wrestlers to agree to form a union. Hulk Hogan, who was one of his closest friends, you know, at the time, he definitely, you know, Jesse was like, this guy definitely was in on it. And it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, union, great, great idea. He was like, yeah, because you're signing away your likeness. Vince is going to make more money off you when you're retired and can't go no more off your likeness. He owns your name, so he could just put your name on any toy or product, and it's his. You know, Jesse had a problem with it, so he wouldn't give up or sign away his name because he brought the name to the wrestling. So once Hulk Hogan came and snitched, allegedly Hulk Hogan did this, came over and snitched to Vince McMahon that a coup was being formed and he wanted to know who all was in that room. He's like, well, Jesse brought it up. Jesse started it and Hogan was given names. And one of the names that was like people who were there listening, not saying he was a part of it or anything, but he was there listening. So they had him like he was guilty by association and just grouped him in the bunch and was like, Rocky Johnson. Vince was upset. He was highly upset with Rocky Johnson. And from that point on, he was not trying to work with or really push Rocky Johnson's career. This is the rumor that has been going around and floating. Now, is it true? How true is it? We don't know. But what we do know is that these narratives happen. You know, Vince felt betrayed. Some wrestlers fell in line. Like, people are all like, oh, fell in line. But 
the wrestlers who he felt like I've entrusted everything into you or if I gave you a sense of responsibility, then, you know, he felt kind of betrayed by that. So Jesse was out. And who else was out at that time? Um, let me see. After Jesse left and was out, I'm trying to think who else was out. It was a couple of wrestlers on the hit list. From Vince McMahon at that time, he was not he was not very happy about that at all. So that's a B for your bonnet, and that was really it. I mean, they came to forgive each other. You know, he I think Rocky was like, I didn't do it. You know, I didn't have anything to do with that. I was just probably getting dressed for my match, but no, my name came in it. But you didn't do what you said you were gonna do about me, Vince. <laughs> You know, and he could say that. But they all worked together, still worked, and had a good relationship with Vince. Plus, you know, Rocky stayed with him long, you know, when he could have left. Probably got another deal somewhere else. He stayed with Vince. And when he left, uh, he went and got his son ready, him and Pat Patterson. And by the time The Rock came, Rock was prepared. For anything as far as in the wrestling game. He had been schooled and on what to do and Vince called him up. Put him in his ring and the Rocky Mavia character didn't work. But the Rock eventually took off. Got his uh got his break. And once he did that, it was on. Now his son is like the biggest thing in professional sports. <laughs> professional wrestling. The Rock. So. Yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you informed now. I got the road. So don't forget to hit up the Cash App, the name Carcino on the Cash App. And you can click one of the four videos here and please enjoy it.